Mr. Chairman, I, I simply want to implore you and, and your Democratic colleagues to reconsider the policies that you've been pursuing. Uh, on the one hand, you want to mandate not only electric cars, but industrial scale backup batteries for wind and solar farms, all in the name of saving the planet. Yet on the other hand, you want to radically restrict mining, also in the name of saving the planet. Well, you can't do both. You, you've been moderately successful at, at mandating electric cars. Uh, the California bureaucrats have just imposed such a mandate on Californians over the next decade. About 3% of vehicle sales are now electric, so congratulations, only 97% more to go. And we don't need to get into a discussion today about where you think the electricity for your electric cars is going to come from. About 80% of our electricity still comes from the very fossil fuels that you're waging war against, and you're creating devastating shortages by doing that. We'll, we'll save that for another day. But let's just look at the mining requirements. In order to meet your electric car mandates, specifically a six-fold increase in demand over the next decade, we're gonna need 384 additional graphite, lithium, nickel, and cobalt mines by 2035, according to industry forecasts. Expensive recycling mandates will only reduce this number to 336 new mines that we're going to need. In fact, according to the uh, International Energy Agency, an electric car requires six times the mineral inputs of a comparable internal combustion vehicle, six times the mining to produce a comparable car. And of course, copper is a critical component in this technology, and copper is what you're trying to shut down in the matter before us today. If it is your contention that the mining required to produce electric cars is a threat to the environment, then you are also admitting that the electric cars that require it are a threat to the environment. Can't you see how foolish and self-destructive and absurdly contradictory these policies have become? And can't you see yet the damage that you're doing not only to the environment, but to people's lives? As you make it harder and harder to mine the components to meet your mandates, the expense of those materials rises dramatically. We're already seeing that at the gas pump and in our utility bills. And it's not just electricity, it's everything these minerals could be used for if they were more efficiently applied. When something is scarce, it becomes expensive. You're making all of the things that we depend upon for our quality of life more scarce and therefore more expensive. You're fixated on, on a one degree rise of global temperatures over the next century, but you couldn't care less that you're making it financially impossible for many people to heat their homes in sub-freezing winters. Europe's now reverting to burning wood to survive this winter. This is not going to end well for humanity, and it's not going to end well for your party as more and more people connect the dots between your policies and the conditions that they're now suffering. You need to stop this. The resolution before us will at least shed some light on the inexplicably absurd decision that your administration made to unilaterally thwart a bipartisan legislative act and to impede one of the most important copper mines in America. And, and frankly, you need this information more than we do because maybe it will dissuade you from continuing with the childish fantasies and the self-destructive policies that you are going to be held accountable for, both by voters and by history. I yield back.